So the US Food and Drug Administration is responsible for promoting and protecting the public's health, and a major part of that mandate in, involves ensuring that the nation's food supply is safe, sanitary, wholesome, and honestly labelled. Our goal is to reduce preventable death and disease caused by poor nutrition by ensuring that consumers have access to accurate, useful information to make healthy food choices, and by fostering development of healthier food options. The DRIs play an important role in informing how we carry out our mission, and we use the DRIs and the DRI, DRI reports in several ways. First, as part of labeling. DRIs are used in setting most of the daily values on the nutrition facts and the supplement facts labels. Note that the DVs, or daily values, can be a floor or a ceiling, depending on the nutrient and whether it's something to try to get enough of or a recommended amount not to exceed, or an amount recommended not to exceed. Some daily values are based on RDAs or AIs, uh, recommended dietary allowances or adequate intakes. And for others, we use the tolerable upper intake level when the majority of the population consumes in excess of a nutrient's UL. We also use the DRIs in determining nutrients of public health significance that are required, that are required to be declared on the label. Uh, also as part of labeling, we use the DRIs in determining the claims that can be made on a food package, such as nutrient content claims, like a good or excellent source of a nutrient, and also health claims, which describe the relationship between a food or a food component and a reduced risk of disease or health-related condition. And so, for instance, to carry an excellent source claim, a nutrient content claim, the product must contain 20% or more of a daily value per rack or reference amount customarily consumed uh, of a vitamin or mineral. In addition, we use the DRIs as part of how we assess the safety of fortifying foods with nutrients like vitamin D or folic acid. Now specific to sodium and potassium, sodium is required to be listed on the, on the nutrition facts label by statute. As part of the recent update to the nutrition facts label, the daily value for sodium was adjusted from 2,400 milligrams to 2,300 milligrams per day. Additionally, in 2016, we issued draft guidance to industry for voluntary sodium reduction in foods short and long-term goals. Short-term goals are intended to support average daily sodium intake of 3,000 milligrams per day, and the long-term goals were intended to support average daily intake of 2,300 milligrams per day. We received a number of extremely helpful comments to that draft voluntary guidance, and we continue to carefully review and consider those comments. Potassium was determined to be a nutrient of public health significance and is now required on the updated nutrition facts label. You can see it here now on the updated label. It was added along with vitamin D. Calcium and iron remain and vitamins A and C are no longer required but they can be added voluntarily. In addition, as part of the update to the nutrition facts label, the daily value for potassium was updated from 3,500 milligrams to 4,700 milligrams per day. I'd like to join my colleagues in thanking the committee in advance for their work, and we look forward to the final report and the results uh, so that uh, to inform our future decision making.